favorite memories are when we went to go get fast skin robins. And another one is when at church, you would give the best sermons in the world. And you have been so kind to our family during these past couple of months. You are the best preacher in the world. And we would just sit on her couch and talk about like school, sports, and just like our life at home, I guess. And it would just be really fun getting to share all of our week plans together, I guess. And then Pastor Pam has impacted my life by always being there for my family and um, just always knowing what to say. Hey Pam, it's Julie. Gosh, I can't believe that you're leaving, but I really just had to let you know about some of the amazing experiences that I've had with you. Um, I'll never forget the first time that we really spent quality time together, I met you at a Starbucks and it was after Joel had been diagnosed and I was furious at the world and you let me feel my anger and you didn't just tell me to pray and make it all better. Um, and I was so appreciative of that because if somebody had just told me to pray and make it all better, I would have been furious at them. But what you did teach me is you taught me how to pray. I'll never forget one time you showed up at the hospital at 5 a.m. for one of Joel's surgeries. And you taught me how to pray. Pray for skillful surgeon hands. Pray for strength for me and my girls. And this was just so unbelievable. There was a time where I was feeling so, so low and mad at the world. And you talked about the university of adversity and how adversity can make us bitter or better. And I decided with Joel that cancer was not going to define our family, that we were going to take this adversity and try and live with it and live a life of experiences, which is what we did. You cared for our family with such unbelievable love from spending time with me to checking in on Joel for ice cream with the girls, all of that. And uh, one other sermon that just really spoke to me was you talked about a resume life or a eulogy life and the eulogy that you gave cooking up a life showed that Joel didn't chase a resume life he truly lived by accumulating joy top these are the top five reasons why we think you are the best pastor ever you always say hi to us and ask us about ourselves Number four, you let us participate in church services. You quote Bruce Springsteen in your sermons. Number two, you are one of the kindest people we have ever met. Number one, you care about us and pray for us. We'll miss you, bye. One of my favorite memories with Pastor Pam is probably when me, Maddie, and Kate snuck into her room to write like thank yous um, on her whiteboard and she caught us and so we tried to sneak out of the room and it was really fun and one way she impacted my life is I was sitting in church and I remember hearing one of the things she said that really helped me in school it was like don't change your beliefs to like fit in with your friends make friends that believe in what you believe in and that really helped me and so, thank you. Hey Pam, we decided to make videos for you and one of the questions that we asked ourselves was what is one of our favorite memories with you? While I can't say it is my favorite memory, uh, I was immediately so impressed with your leadership and your calming presence during the first month or two of your call at Trinity when you had to deal with um, complicated clergy situation, shall we say. Uh, you showed that same unique leadership trait again when transgressions of a, a past youth minister uh, came back around. And obviously, while both of those situations were undeniably tough on we who are Trinity Church, your guidance, your genuine concern, your reassuring demeanor, or 
just unparalleled and help me know our church would be okay. I'll miss your energy, your outgoing personality, and your efforts to make all feel welcome at Trinity. I'll miss your willingness to take on tough questions about faith and the Bible and religion, all without making me feel ashamed for asking such questions or having doubts. I'll miss your courage and your wisdom in facing critique during the Shalom process and beyond. Your ability to rise above uh, has taught me so much and I will try to think of what would Pam do when I face your when I face personal adversity in the future. I'll miss your purposeful interactions with my children. I really can't tell you how much that has meant to me. I can't thank you enough for sharing your sacred personal time with us at the Saxons house and the Murray's house. And please thank Joe on our behalf for sharing you. Uh, I know it can be easy to, to share you with so many people. So I'm way more worried about Trinity's future than I am about yours. Uh, our loss will certainly be the gain of wherever you end up hanging your hat. So keep us all in your thoughts and we will absolutely be doing the same. Please, please, please stay in touch. My cell is 404-374-4137. Would love to hear from you. Take care. We'll miss you. Hello, Pam. You obviously don't need this validation, but you are wonderful. I love your enthusiasm and approachability and informality and the fact that you care so deeply. I love the way that you weave humor, sports moments, and poets, mystics, and academics' writings and perspectives into your sermons versus just referring back to scripture. I really appreciate you hammering home the theme that we are all the church. You've been a great shepherd, and I am deeply sorry that you're leaving. Thank you for the past nine years. Hey, Pam. We're just uh, giving a word of thanks for your leadership and all that you did for Trinity and for us as a family. Um, I'm so grateful to have been able to serve in session during uh, your time with Trinity Presbyterian Church and through Mission Council. It was just an absolute blessing to get to work with you in so many ways and you guided this church um, moving forward in more ways than you'll probably ever know and we're just so thankful for that and of course from our family um, I can remember sitting there in your office during a meeting that one time when I looked up and saw the picture of you and Vivian during her baptism and said what is that about and you explained the story of how grandmother had shared that in the letter she wrote and um, that will always touch me and something I will carry with me um, and that connection that uh, she had as one of the first members of Trinity and to you and uh, we're just grateful that you were able to do so much for us and we're, we'll always carry that with us and thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. Pam, uh, you can see my eye bags are from crying so much yesterday at your, your don't zoom in on them on your at your service um i just can't say enough how amazing and talented i think you are um i have so much gratitude for you and just what you've done for me spiritually um you i'm gonna cry again but you are the best minister i've ever known um in my entire life and i'm just don't know what we'll do without you um we just love you so much so Thank you so much for everything. Um, you will be so missed. Um, and just a million thank yous. Thank you, Pam. We love you. And we can't wait to see what you do next. We'll be supportive of you in any way we can. Thank you and best of luck. Thank you, Pastor Pam, for all you've done for our church. We will miss you. Hey, Pam. Carrie Bainbridge here. I just wanted to say on behalf of Gordon and myself, um, we just thank you for everything that you've done at Trinity over the last nine years. 
And although I wish that we had had more time to build more of a personal relationship with you um, directly, um, I just want to thank you that you know you've always um, laid a lot of meaning um, on myself and um, Gordon and the kids through your leadership, um, through the word that you deliver through every sermon, and we couldn't be more grateful for your time at Trinity. I'm going to have the kids um, wish you well as two in a separate message. Mitchell and Collier um, have been there since babies, and uh, we just wish you all the best and look forward to staying in touch and seeing where you go next. Thanks. Hi, Pam. Um, just want to take this time to uh, recall the time that I had first met you. Uh, it was at a a coaches meeting for the Trinity basketball team. And it was one evening and I was sitting back in the back and you came back to introduce yourself and before you could even get your name out, I had to stop you because you had actually been at Trinity for over a year. So I knew you and I was embarrassed that I hadn't actually already tried to introduce myself to you, but you were very saying, oh, that's, that's fine. That's good to meet you. And you suggested that I come by uh, the office just for a chat, which I was very happy with, and I did. Uh, but at that time in my life, there we had just gone through some uh, some family losses, and I was in the middle of changing jobs, so there was a lot of calamity. So I came into your office uh, with that baggage and proceeded to unpack that baggage in your office. To, to sure that you were not expecting that, but you were completely understanding, uh, very courteous and kind. And uh, the words that you told me that, that day have just really stuck with me since I left your office. You just told me everything was gonna be fine. Everything was gonna be okay. And you're correct. Uh, and it has really meant a lot to me. And. Uh, I appreciate it very much and I want to forget it. But um, I do regret uh, selfishly that, uh, that I won't hear those words from the pulpit anymore on Sundays. But I look forward to all of us gathering together again to, to hear those words uh, in the future in our fellowship. Hi Pam, this is a sad day that we're giving you this tribute, but I definitely had a few things I wanted to say. I don't know if I've ever told you this, um, but even though Mike and I grew up in a very religious atmosphere, when we moved to Atlanta in our young adult life, we didn't have a church. And um, I gotta be honest and tell you the truth. We joined Trinity Presbyterian Church because we were trying to get into Trinity Early Learning Center, which I'm sure you've heard before, but it's just such a great daycare. And so um, there's my confession. But once the kids grew a little bit older and we were ready to find a church, um, we weren't even sure if Trinity would be the place for us. And so we came to church one Sunday, and of course you were preaching, and we heard your sermon, and we knew instantly that we had found our home. And we have uh, been there since in every confidence that we were home and that that was the church for our family. Um, as everyone knows, I cry almost every single Sunday um, during your sermons, not just during the beautiful music, but when you are giving your word, um, I really do cry every Sunday. And I've often, you know, wondered why is it that I'm so touched? And uh, I really do think it's not just the message. It's the person delivering the message. And you are real and you're relatable. And that's a really unique combination and something that I think is truly valued. We want to thank you for nourishing our souls every Sunday and for making us better people. We are going to miss you dearly. We love you. So look, I know we're all so very sad that you're leaving town. And I think I can speak, at least for some of us, when I say we're all so mad. And while that's not good, I think it's a natural reaction for this change. And I personally have struggled with it. How do I accept this change in a mature and Christian way? Luckily, our good friend Julie Saxon keeps a log of all your sermons and she writes down all of your favorite quotes. And so I was looking through those the other day and I saw one that really inspired me, especially for this situation. In your words, you told us we need to choose peace over anxiety and we need to choose courage over fear. We need to practice what you preach. 
Thank you, Pam. I just wanted to thank you for all the wisdom and encouragement you've given my family and I. I'll never forget what your sermons have taught me and my family and the friendly face you always greet with whenever I see you. Thank you for all of the, everything you've done for the past nine years. My favorite memories with Pam are the wonderful social gatherings that we all had together, whether it was a Christmas gathering at the Saxons or uh, impromptu meeting at the Murray's. But I love sitting around with you and hearing your heart and listening um, to you and just getting to know the kind of wonderful person you are. And because of that, you've impacted my life. Um, you're one of the reasons I joined Trinity Presbyterian Church. Um, and you've just impacted me by being the strong, powerful woman that you are, yet genuine and honest and giving and loving. And just um, your good nature about you, it exudes from you and you're such an inspiration. And I'm also just so thankful uh, for you and your support that you've given to Julie, my best friend, and to her family. So um, because of that, I love you and we're going to miss you and um, I wish you all the best. Hi Pam, I just wanted to say how much you've meant to me over these years and how much you've taught me and I will always remember going to your office after choir and eating lollipops and talking on your couch and writing notes on your whiteboard after. And I will always remember your sermons. Hashtag bless. Um, I love you so much and I'm gonna miss you so much. But I know you're staying in Atlanta, so I'm not gonna be saying goodbye. I'm gonna be saying I'll see you sometime soon. And I will. Um, I love you so much.